Once again, today's top stories. London has endured another night of German bombing. Most damage was concentrated in the East End. The RAF has struck enemy aerodromes in La Havre and the Low Countries. In Russia, further German losses are reported around Leningrad. In Asia, the American fortress at Corregidor is still defiant but Japanese forces are reported nearing the Burmese oil fields. Once again, today's top stories. See here, this isn't about your dedication. Pringle certainly attests to your loyalty. No, your dismissal stems from the Titanic mission. That failure can no longer be ignored. Especially now. I am sorry, but someone must shoulder the blame. The service, you understand. We can't be held responsible. The past, forever locked in regret. But what if the past could be changed? Thirty years have come and gone since the night that saw the end of a world, my world. The service needed someone on the Titanic. They chose me. I was to wait for a signal from my contact, so I remained in my cabin. I left only once Georgia was on board, and that's when it came. There'd be no second chance. It was Sunday, April 14th, too late, you see, for the Titanic, for me. What if I'd met with my contact, prevented disaster? What if the past could be changed? What then? Good evening. I am Smethels, your steward. And, if I may say so, it is good to see you up and about. You've been in your cabin the whole voyage. A touch of the Maldon Mare, was it? Seasickness can be quite unpleasant, especially if it's one's first crossing. Since you haven't been out of your cabin, may I instruct you on how to get assistance while on board the Titanic? Very well. Your correspondence. 2,200 on board, and they all want messages delivered. 
promptly. Even if it is 1912, and the Titanic, the most advanced means of sea conveyance ever devised, I still have only two hands. Here, a map of the ship for you. Compliments of the White Star Line. I have taken the liberty of indicating your cabin, C-73. Of course, on a Sunday evening at this hour, there won't be many people out. Will there be anything else? Have you unpacked? You'll find your trunk key in your bag, on the bed. If you require additional assistance, please ring the bell by the door. Good night. Hello. Don't think we've met. I'm Leyland Sacum Trask, metaphysical scribe and evangelist for the supernatural. I've been in London attending a conference on premonitions among the sensitive. You've heard of my institute, the Astral Bureau of Circulation in Boston? The ABC is a place where mediums of impeccable character can co-mingle in harmony. There's a range, of course, but given the right training, psychics can reveal information hidden to others. This is a ship of destiny, which I think you know. Good night. It's about time. You're late. Another five minutes and I'd have cancelled your mission. Look at this. A German colonel named Zeitel. He's inspecting their embassies in Havana, Washington and Mexico City. We know better. Ten days ago, the Bureau got word that Zeitel has in his possession a priceless copy of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, stolen two months ago in Paris after its purchase by a very highly placed member of His Majesty's government. Of course, didn't they tell you anything? His Lordship's watching this very closely, very closely indeed. I wouldn't fumble this chance either unless you fancy spending the rest of your career in some grotty Midlands back office shuffling paper about. No, he's with a protégé, name of Hedelitz, I believe. The two spend a great deal of time in the Café Parisien, nibbling pastries. Get into the wireless room. I don't know or care how. Officer Morrow wouldn't let me in. See if Zeitel's received or sent any telegrams about the Rubaiyat. You've got a cryptograph in your trunk. It'll unscramble the German codes for you. You use the brains God gave you. Watch people. Listen. When you find the Rubaiyat, knock on my door. Cabin F, 34. Use the second class stairs. You should be set. Remember, this is your big chance. Don't fail. After all this time, it's Georgia. I'd heard you on board. Where have you been? Who am I? But it's Georgia. The one person you could tell anything to. I don't blame you for not speaking to me. You told me once I cared only for a title. Well, I've got that now. I'm Lady Georgia, wife to Charles, Lord Lambeth. Only it's all gone so wrong. Why on earth didn't you find me earlier? It's been five years. I'd have waited a lot longer to see you again. Why didn't you tell me where you'd gone? 
Dina hadn't a clue, nor did Jack. My letters were returned. Just like you to show up now, with everything such a beastly mess. You must help me. You've no doubt heard the rumors. I won't deny most of them. I can't. Even if the money's gone, I won't give the diamonds to Charles. Never. These are all that remains. My entrance for a new life without Charles or Sasha. Sasha? The owner of the Barbican Gallery? We're friends of a sort. He's sailing on the Titanic, taking some paintings to New York to sell. Please. I mustn't talk any longer. Take it. Take the necklace. It's my only chance now. Keep it for me. And don't tell Charles you have it. You can't know what he's like. Come here. Good evening. Third Officer Morrow here. I am sorry, but this is the officer's promenade. No passengers allowed. Yes, very calm. No moon. I don't like that. Can't see what's coming. No moon means surprises, as if we don't have enough already. Mr. Ismay, the White Star Line's president's on board. We're walking eggshells round him, I tell you. <laughs> Though that's nothing compared to the creeping about my brother-in-law's doing at the moment. His entire London office is in an uproar. Tom works in the Admiralty. Seems our plans for troop deployments against Germany disappeared three weeks ago. Tom says the big boys have petrified the Jerrys who get wind of it. Could upset the balance of power. Politics. Desktop espionage. Bureaucrats. Pa, give me the C. You can toss the rest. Never have. Not since the war. South Africa. Boer War. The officer was a drinker. He was drunk when they trapped us out on the veldt. On a moonless night, it was a massacre. We never saw them coming. Drink always leads to the devil. An interesting connection. For all I know, it could be true. A man's got his troubles. Sick child, being away from home. But I hate whiners and apologizers. Well, thank you for your insight. Have a look, why don't you? Mind you, Phillips will have my head if he catches you in there. But I don't see any harm. Go on in. <laughs> 